Silence be the voice of your community. Open your door to the 2010 census. Caesar, Randy and he's got something to talk about that's important and uh, especially to people who have one last resort in the state our parks. Randy, you're on. Well, good morning, Reed. Good morning, John. Good morning. Glad to see you here today. Thank you. Something smells in the studio. Just <laughs> <laughs> good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, got a copy of the Jamestown Post Journal today. Uh, it's been our uh, worst fear. Uh, Long Point State Park starting Monday. They're going to lock it up. Uh, they'll leave the marina open, but they're not going to let you in there. Um, I don't know what they're thinking. I'm sort of getting really upset here in this. Every day I read the paper, it's Governor Patterson's done something else. Um, I know the guy's trying to uh, save the state, but I think he's just going in a backwards direction. Um, tourism's a big thing here, and um, if we're not going to have anything for people to do, nobody's going to come to the state. I guess the only ones that'll have any money here is probably New York City and um, probably the government. So uh, I want you to get it right, Governor. Um, complain. I'm shut down 41 parks and I think it's uh, 14 historical sites in the state. Now this is just getting really ridiculous. I mean, first it was the hospital they're talking about shutting down, and now it's um, our parks. Um, we have Midway. Um, people complain about Midway, but um, I was real for Midway. I hated to see more condominiums. And now that we're not going to have Long Point, um, there goes our lake access too. Uh, so I want you to write the governor, all your politicians, and complain because this is just getting totally insane. So uh, I'd like to see, <laughs> personally, I'd like to see the governor head back to New York City just before we cut it off and send it afloat in the ocean. Yeah. So for... Uh, <laughs> The people in Albany, the government, and um, this is for you. What? There we go. This is what I think of Albany and the government, so uh, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Randy. Um, of course, they shut down a lot of hospitals. They did, sir, and they tried to shut down Westfield. It looks like we don't know yet, but we may survive in part. Uh, they shut down most of it. Um, I wanted to say uh, the government has stolen a lot of other money, too. Uh, he doesn't give a hoot, incidentally. He's not running anymore. <laughs> he knows they, he'd have the greatest catastrophic loss in the history of man because he so mismanaged the government. Unfortunately, it's not all his fault. I mean, he had, a lot of this took place before he came oh, into yeah. office, but he's taken the blows. And uh, at this point, they refuse and cannot and refuse to cut back on spending. They're going to raise our taxes. They've already well, raised them 20% now. They're going to continue raising them in a state where industry is running because of the high taxes. We're the highest tax state in the country before they raised them 20%. Insanity in this state. I don't know how people take it. Well, they make sure that son of a gun isn't going to be reelected anyway. He's done nothing constructive about this damage. <clears throat> I know, God bless Kathy Young, she went down and personally tried to get them to keep a long, a long point open. That's a beautiful park, one of our most lovely parks, and uh, they're just closing it down. They have the access to marine means you can walk down a little path and get your boat. That's it. And if they just, you know, they said, well, we'll, we'll save 40000 some minuscule amount, uh, they could make that back with a hot dog stand, for Pete's sake. Just put a little hot dog stand there and sell it to the kiddies. They'd make 40000 every year. No imagination. Got a guest here. He says, Reed, are you just going to talk forever and ever? I said, well, there's one more thing. We're going to have a period of meditation, and we will think about the good things. Like, for instance, I can advise you now, my grandfather used to say, Reedy, don't plant nothing before direct decoration day in these parts. And well, I checked the weather report, and it looks like it's free and clear of frost right through to almost decoration day anyway. So I'm going to put my plants in. Yep, and I think you can too, without much danger. Meantime, let's think about the garden, the flowers that we'll have, the beauty of life, and everything that is sweet and gentle and wonderful. This is for you, a moment of peace and quiet. Meditate every day. Your blood pressure drops 10 points, and you'll be a better person for it. This is for you.
that's how they look when they're in the woods. <laughs> millions and millions of these beautiful little things right here. And when I'm thinking about it, I'm going to dip one and salt another one. Mmm, mmm, mmm. I love them. Oh, delicious. John Hamels, noted educationalist and educator. He's been superintendent of schools, not in one school, but this system, but several. He's been on school boards. He's taught for uh, how many years? Fifteen. Fifteen years before he became a probably assistant principal. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah. Then you become a principal. That too. Then you become a superintendent. You can. There you go. <laughs> it's just like the, any, any club. The ladder, you, know, you go yeah. up the chairs. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's true. He is a very, very well versed on education, and we have an educational crisis in this country and in this state. The funding has been cut by the federal and the states, New York in particular. You're going to get a lot less money for your schools. Now, where's this money going to come from? The local tax rolls. And the, the, right now, they're so high, we're the highest taxed county in the United States right now, and they're going to raise them more. Like, uh, I think it was Forestville. I hope, I don't want to give them a bad, bu a bad bum, a bum uh, name, but one of our local districts will say that. 50% increase in local taxes. Now, this is enough to kill you. Schools, more and more, they're getting complaints that the kids are coming out ill-educated. Many schools, they can't even read properly. Can't do no arithmetic, like we used to say. Can't figure. And uh, they have a very, very primitive knowledge of science. Uh, we're in a, in a very competitive world where you have to have a good education. You need your scientists. You need your craftsmen, your brilliant people. And we're letting them down in a lot of districts. Now, I'm not saying every district, but the, the level of education has been dropping. There's no question about that. The statistics show it. We have less and less funding coming in, on the other hand. Now, money equals better education, usually, which is why, incidentally, some 30-odd years ago, New York, the United States Supreme Court prohibited school districts from having local school taxes because the rich districts made a lot more money. And so this was a prohibition. They said drop all school taxes, fund it through the state, and everybody gets an equal share. The rich communities don't get a lot of money, poor communities suffer terribly, no more. That's unconstitutional for your education of your children. Well, the one thing they didn't put in this law, which uh, the ruling was a date, see? And so New York State, since there's no date when they've got to implement the law, has not implemented the law. And a lot of other states haven't either. And uh, New York State did throw in the STAR program, which eases the burden a little bit, but it's not the real thing. And even the STAR has been cut back by Governor Patterson. Well, uh, he's, he's cut back everything. You know, he took the... Chautauqua County has a sled fund. The uh, snowmobilers uh, have to pay a, a big money for a, a registration, especially when they come out of state, which doesn't make much sense because you're trying to get them to come in here in the winter where there's very little going on. But uh, that fund goes into uh, that. That money goes into a fund to improve the trails, to uh, make things better for the uh, the snowmobilers. There was a nice fund there. He took it, just grabbed it up. Welfare in New York. That's where most of the money's going. Um, so. Uh, I have no idea what's going on with that. But at any rate, we do have some problems, and especially, as I said, in the education department because of the money. The money's not going to come in this year. And your taxes are going to go ape. And education, you know, there's very little on that school budget that the educators can actually control. It's, it amounts to about 4%, really. Because mm -hmm. everything else is under contract. Everything else is mandated. required, mandated by the school, by the state. And so they only have peanuts like the music program, the art program, the sports program, the bus program. They can cut those. That's about it. John Hamels, you're on. <laughs> Tell me. I've, I've said enough. What would you like to talk about? Well, you're, in, you're, in, you're, you're noticing the pinch. Absolutely. What are schools doing about this? Well, you know, this is kind of cyclical uh, from time to time, but this is, to me, this is an extraordinary situation we're in. Back when I was superintendent, I called it the perfect storm back, I think it was about 2004, when you had health insurance, your um, retirement rates were going up, the tech, uh, state aid was going down, and everything was coming at us at once. So what do you do? Well, this is no different, Reed, than if this is your own personal um, uh, budget at home. You either cut 